The Footscray Football Club was another facing extinction in the late 1980s. The Doggies facing little choice but to merge with Fitzroy or die in October 1989. But the power of the people rallied like our game had never seen before. The masses mobilised in an enormous Save the Dogs campaign. Thousands of footy fans pounded the pavement, rattling tins and tirelessly door knocking for every single dollar that could be spared. In the end, Save the Dogs raised a remarkable $1.5 million in just 19 days. The doggies surviving the hangman's noose in a timely reminder that our game is truly the people's game. That merge was heavily weighted towards Fitzroy and uh, Footscray incredibly wasn't going to get a lot out of it and uh, it took people like Peter Gordon and it took the Footscray people to rattle those cans and get the whole thing going. Ross Oakley was seen as the public face, I think unfairly to Ross Oakley, I think he's, you look back on Ross's tenure and he'd say he actually did a very good job but he had the um, car stickers saying up yours Oakley and there was real hatred out there in the, uh, in the streets directed towards him and the people did take over and they, uh, they had a win. While the Bulldogs were rejuvenated by their 1989 near-death experience, the same could not be said for their proposed merger partner, Fitzroy. The Lions found the going increasingly difficult through the early 90s, with dwindling revenue and spiralling debt. They didn't have a home, didn't have a training base. There wasn't the white knight that other clubs may have got, uh, or the support base, to give them that chance to survive. By late June of 1996, Fitzroy was on its last financial legs. The AFL stepped in to guarantee funds to ensure the club could see out the season, and merger discussions were well underway with North Melbourne. But North were an on-field powerhouse who would ultimately go on to win the Premiership that year, and other AFL clubs were fearful of the creation of a super team should the proposed merger be passed. Instead, they approved an 11th hour approach from the lowly Brisbane Bears, and on July 4, 1996, the Brisbane Lions were born. I think that would have been a much cleaner, uh, more satisfying way for it to finish. But they're resilient gr groups, football clubs, and I don't think anyone's ever going to put their hand up and, and, and want to be seen to be the person that said, I brought my football club down and sent it into state. And that's why it never happened. And I guess it, it wasn't a total surprise when they went. Uh, I was, it was very sad that they went the way they did. Fitzroy's last game in Melbourne was at the MCG against Richmond in round 21, 1996. The biggest crowd the Roys had seen in more than three and a half years. Almost 50,000 fans turned up to say goodbye. They witnessed the grim spectacle of the Lions being torn apart by 151 points. But that pain was nothing in comparison to thousands of broken Fitzroy hearts. That game against Richmond was just sad. It was terribly sad to watch that. But for those people that really cared, and I've got quite a few of my friends that are passionate Fitzroy people, and the wounds are still there. I mean, I think it was just sort of this public, they just, they just died in public, didn't they? But they went over playing Fremantle at Subiaco Oval in front of a you know, crowd of seven, 8,000 people. They were undeserving. That was that the AFL should have made that game be played in Melbourne and give those Fitzroy people the chance to send off their club. The end of an era, the end of an age for Fitzroy. Go and talk to somebody who barracks for that football club and get them to tell you what it's like to not have your football club playing AFL anymore. The support of your own club, you can't imagine what it'd be like for that club to be shipped into state. Uh, I guess you get something if you follow them. Better than nothing, do you? Don't you? But I, I feel for Fitzroy people. You feel for any club that um, is forced into oblivion. I know, I know a lot of Fitzroy supporters and some don't go to the foot anymore. Some still do and some have adopted the Brisbane Lions. But it's not the same. It's not the same. The Brisbane Lions of the early 21st century would go on to become one of the greatest teams our game has ever known. Ironically, it was the fear of creating a super team that had led to Fitzroy and Brisbane's shotgun wedding in the first place. The Lions claimed a hat-trick of premierships from 2001 to 2003. Unthinkable glory within just five years of their arranged marriage. Whilst nothing can fully compensate for the loss of Fitzroy's independent identity, that long-awaited success was enough to bring a substantial number of disenfranchised Fitzroy fans back to our game.